Good morning. This is Dr. Dennis L. Waters speaking. This is Restore Executive Life and Leadership Coaching and Consulting. I will restore broadcasts. Back in the studio, there's some things that have been prayed about, talked about in my mind, in my heart, and with others as well. Been listening to a few things over the past few days and looking at a few videos of individuals. I've looked at the videos of Mr. T.D. T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes, and I've looked at some videos I've had from him for a very long time. One was, Nothing Happens Until You Speak. It was a conference that he did, I believe, in 2006 or 2008 in regard to a pastor's conference, and it was a pastor and the helpers that were in his particular spiritual, uh, in their center, in their churches, and he was talking to the ministers and their their people, the people that helped them as ministers to actually build the church in their communities. And then there was also a presentation that was done at the Hamptons Ministerial Conference by um, Pastor um, uh, Minister Reverend Floyd Flake. And uh, I had always admired Reverend Floyd Flake. Uh, He was a pastor of Bethel AME Church in New York. I think it was Rochester. I'm not really sure, but the name of the best little AME Church, I believe. And I was listening to him. He was basically talking about the same thing. And as I watched those, I was a bit convicted about this whole thing about uh, ministry. And uh, for me, I've said to individuals that when I talk about restore executive life leadership coaching and consulting, when I talk about I will restore, uh, when I talk about spirit of victory and praise, uh, International Spiritual Center, all of those for me are ministry. All of those are things. I was first of all a minister, and the intent was to build up individuals. And as I listened to uh, Bishop Jakes. Uh, I've been to one of his conferences, at least one of those that was held in the Washington metropolitan area. Uh, Then that particular conference is likely where I got that set of CDs. Uh, And I listened to him in regard to this particular item. And he was, again, speaking to the uh, minister and to their helpers. And he talked about getting 12 individuals. The other person I was listening to was an individual named Mike Murdoch. Uh, you may know him, may not. Um, you'd have to look him up, M-I-K-E-M-U-R-D-O-C-K. And his particular item was talking about a thousand times more. And his particular word that he loves to talk about is the word of wisdom, wisdom. And uh, both of them were talking about the pastor, the minister, and those who help. Uh, Dr. Murdoch uh, goes through the process where he talks about he had covenant with 300 individuals, how they were working together with him. And he talked about these individuals that he wanted in his lifetime to bring about 300 individuals who became millionaires. And that uh, struck a chord within me, struck a chord within me. Why? Because I've understood as I listened to him and uh, I listened to uh, Dr. T.D. Jakes. They were again for me saying the same thing that another friend of mine, the Reverend Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, uh, was saying. The uh, Another friend of mine, Reverend um, Sheila McKeithen, uh, were saying all of those. And I had taken a few days to read the book. Um, a book dealing with spiritual prosperity and abundance. All of these things were moving within me. And so it brought me to this particular point. For me, also, the idea of prosperity, uh, idea of prosperity is not something that just happens all of a sudden. It has to do with a mindset. It has to do with, for me, becoming one's authentic self growing because prosperity abundance is not just simply the aspect of money 
it has to do with the aspect of the five things that we call one's restore matrix or matrix. It has to do with spirituality. It has to do with mentality. It has to do with physicality. It has to do with relationships. It has to do with one's career. All of those things are energies that one has and that are in the world, in the universe. And one goes through a process to make sure that they are aligned with all the other energies in the universe, if you will. And that is really what abundance and prosperity is all about. And so this is what we're talking about even now. This is what we're having this conversation about even now. And we'd mentioned before that we had this four Ds, which we call desire. What do you want? What's your vision? What did God call you into the universe to be? And then the aspect of having that before you were formed in the womb, there is this seed, if you will, desire. Sire, the word seed is in there, desire. And there are places in the Bible where this is said to actually um, be illustrated. The experience of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 4, excuse me, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 9, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And then reading from the um, book of Psalms, there is an experience that is, if I read it from the New Living Translation of the Bible, that David had, David the 100 and uh, Psalms 139th Division, and it is uh, verses 13, I believe, through um 13 through 17. It's an amazing statement when you think about it. It says, you, speaking of spirit, made all the delicate inward parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in other seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life you was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. And that's the book of Psalms, the 139th division, verses 13 through 18. And the part that I'm speaking about is that every moment was laid out of one's life before a single day had passed. Remember, Jeremiah says, his statement, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you spirit speaking to him and then there's the idea that uh, the idea the uh, it is said that the buddhist asked this uh, seemed to be conflicting statement it says uh, what was what did the faces of your grandparents look like the idea is that in some kind of way you should know you should know i should know what the faces of my grandparents look like, what the faces of my grandparents should look like. But a person will say, well, I don't know. I, I wasn't here. But that's where that spiritual domain comes in. God finished the spiritual creation. It's already done. We're just living it out in the physical world. It's, it's already, and it's already perfect. It's already, and it's already perfect. It's already, and it's already perfect. And so that's when we talk about the four Ds, remember, it is the first D is desired, the second D is defined, the third D is divinely intended, and the fourth D is lived on the fourth dimensional level. Jesus called what I'm talking about there is this entire aspect of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. It is within. When we speak of within, we're talking about the subconscious the imagination, the realm of spirit. 
where the Bible says the temple of God or the house of God is within you, within me. We are children of God. That's what we're talking about here. And it's not an imaginary thing. It's not an imaginary thing. It's real. In the book of Genesis, if you look very carefully, you'll find there are two creations that take place, two creations that take place. It does not say why there are two creations. It just says there are two creations. And remember that there were not two It was not a human standing up looking at God as God was creating. So whoever wrote the book of Genesis, whoever wrote it, they were writing it after it happened. And whoever told them what to write, how they uh, intuit what to write, how the Spirit communicated to them what to write, that's what they wrote. But they did not have an eyewitness account to what they wrote other than what they got from spirit. That's that's how they wrote it. But there are two creation stories, one in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and one in the book of Genesis chapter 2. They are not meant to be really historical. They are meant to be an allegory, if you will. They are meant to be metaphorical. They, they are not meant to be historical. People used to say that the before there was what they call carbon dating and all of this kind of stuff we have now. Um, they, they used to say that 6,000 years was the age of the earth. Well, we know better. When you know better, you do better. And so when we look at that, those two creations, if you could look at it and say metaphorically, the first one, spiritual, the second one brings about a physical world. The first one's spiritual. The second one brings about a physical world. And so we are saying the same thing in regard to the human now, in regard to you. Become aware of the spiritual world, the spiritual creation. Well, where did you get that from? Where did you get that from? There's a statement in the Bible. It says the things that you see were not made of things that do appear. Well, you could ask, well, is that scientific? Well, there is a formula really for this. It's strange, but if you know math, you know that formulas can be adapted. There's a formula called E equals MC squared. It's the theory of relativity. It was used to make it possible to, so to speak, make airplanes that run fly faster than the speed of sound, faster than the speed of sound. The airplanes that we have now can fly um, four times faster than the speed of sound, from what I understand. And I'm not the expert on that. I'd have to get someone on the podcast to help me out with that. But just imagine that we have airplanes that can fly four times the speed of sound. Now, as I say to people that according to what I have read uh, on the web and uh, you know, seen various uh, Senate hearings and all of that kind of thing. They say that they have spotted uh, in the airspace around the United States, perhaps the world, that there are some aircraft of some kind coming from somewhere that flies at what they call Mark 5 to Mark 20. Now, where that's coming from, I don't know. But the idea is that it fly, flies five times faster than the speed of sound, up to 20. At any rate, the aspect is that E equals MC squared. That particular item says that energy times mass, energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. Energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. And you can work with that formula and you can see the possibility that mass, which is M, itself can be created by the things that are invisible, energy and speed of light. 
energy and the speed of light. The only thing that we know that's fast like that, that a person can really find difficult to measure is the speed of thought. Now that's a major thing because when we look at it, we have this creative power that the human has, the ability to imagine. That's what engineers do when they look out and they see a valley and they imagine that a bridge can be there. And what they do once they imagine a bridge can be there is they start measuring the valley, how deep it is, how far across it is. They take all kinds of measurements. And then after they do that, they begin to envision what it will take, what kind of structure, what kind of material, what kind of things would make it possible step by step in a sequence to stretch something between one side to the other. Now, understand what I just said. You have a desire. There is something between where you are right now and where you want to be. And now you start measuring in your mind some kind of way in spirit, in the first creation spirit, divinely intended, lived on the fourth dimension of the imagination, subconscious mind. You are not working by yourself, neither am I. And what takes place is that you begin to, as we would say, keep your mind stayed on Jesus Christ. Or sit together with God in heavenly places. Or be in the temple. That's what really all the shouting is to be about. That's what being in liminal space is to be about. That's what the meditation is to be about. That's what the affirmations are about. Calling those things that are not as though they were. That's what those things are about. That's what discipline and blissipine is about. The Bible says, let the weak say that I am strong. The things that you see physically, see with your eyes, were not made of things that now appear. There are whole processes that are involved here. Entire processes that are involved here. And a person practices, and this is another thing that Dr. Mike Murdoch was talking about, he goes through this process and he talks, what has your focus? Remember, what has your focus? There's this biblical text, which is interesting. It says, judge not by appearance. Don't keep looking at what appears. I say only those who see, see. There are things that you cannot see with the physical eyes. And the idea that my early eighth grade teachers, you could go to college, you could graduate, painted a future for me. That nobody in my family up to that time They didn't just say high school. They said college to an eighth grade student. College. And from there, I could build another step and another step. There's a writer that says, my mind is a center of divine operation. That divine operation is always for expansion and full expression. And this means the production of something beyond what has gone before, something entirely new. 
not included in past experience, but proceeding out of it by an orderly sequence of growth. Therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner in me. Consequently, in my own special world of which I am the center, it will move forward to produce new conditions always in advance of any that have gone before. It keeps creating. Spirit keeps creating. People talk to me. They go through a whole process from time to time. They talk to me. And they talk to me about, you know, where they've come from and everything else. And I've asked people like individuals when we were in high school and junior high school, how did you know you were going to college? How did you know you were going to do this? They were telling me, well, I had a parent that graduated from school, from college. I had a brother or sister that had already gone. I had none of that. Other than my mother had graduated from high school. But I did not have a brother or sister. I had no advisors to tell me. I remember walking across the stage to graduate because I ended up graduating high school because I ended up moving away from home when I was 15 years old, actually 14 and a half, moving away from home, my home. I did not know the impact that it had upon myself, the impact that it had upon my brothers and sisters. I did not know the impact, but Prior to that, my daddy had given me some exciting news, if you will. He said, boy, I'll kill you. He felt threatened by my size and by me, I guess. Uh, he told me, I guess, in a certain kind of way, as he would say, you're getting too big for your britches. I don't know what that means, because I was not the person that threatened his authority. Never was. My mom told me to respect my father, and I did. So what does this have to do with you? What's your desire? Begin at the step that you need to begin at and take action. What's your vision? What's your next goal? Begin from where you are. Get that down. What is it that I'm seeking? I'm seeking, as Dr. T.D. Jakes would say, the Bishop T.D. Jakes would say, we're those 12 persons that really have appropriate sized dreams. There's a strange thing about dreams is that when you work on the dream of another, you enhance and bring about your own dream. That's, that's an amazing thing. The higher you go up the mountain with somebody, the higher you are on the mountain yourself. That's an amazing thing. And I've reached heights that are amazing to me. They're just simply amazing to me. And I've recognized that in this thing of the evolutionary process, if you will, or even when it comes to money making, whatever it may be in regard to that is that I just love doing the whole growth process. And yes, I enjoy making money as well. I enjoy the challenge of it all because what has taken place for me is that I get to sit in space, as I call it, meditation, are together with spirit, with God, with Jesus Christ, I get to actually see how the bridge is built. You know, they got this wonderful bridge, I believe it's in Vietnam, it's called the Invisible Bridge. And it spans two vast, uh, between two mountains, I believe it's high up in the air and it looks like it's not there, but it spans so wide a chasm. And it's like you're walking on air. Can you imagine? Can you imagine your life as it could be? As you would like it would be? I have, because of the journey that I've taken, so many different businesses that we're working with, not to keep, but because there were so many different needs, 
Spirit of Victory and Praise International Spiritual Center is just that. We develop a church, Spirit of Victory and Praise Community Church, and we brought it forth at a particular level. We did things like we have Family and Friends Day, as we called it, and that was great, awesome, wonderful. We studied what we call the ABCs of prayer, the individual. And when we look at it now, we looked at it from the standpoint of when it comes to perseverance, uh, there's another statement says, no one to change but oneself by a person that never got it. And perseverance, um, uh, the uh, never got it says, assumption hardened into fact. Those are all talking about perseverance. You know, you start praying and then you start, you start praying, then you start, you start praying, then you stop. But assumption hardened into fact. Once you start making the affirmation, then you keep on making that affirmation until you have a witness within your spirit. Assumption hardened into fact. Or you can say, act as if. And we, we would just keep praying. And we saw miracles take place of healing and everything else. I've had that experience. I want you to have it if you haven't. To know God. I, I, I know what God has done. It's not a theory. Not a theory. God is not a theory. Not a maybe about that. I've seen it. You can call it raising the dead. You can call it whatever. I told you, I had, I think I told you, maybe it was in my recording just before this, that I went to the doctor recently and had this experience where uh, the doctor said to me that my PSA levels had gone down from December of last year to August of this year. And PSA, as I understand, has to do with prostate cancer. Um, an individual, I'm an African-American male um, that is concerned about that. I'm nearly 70 years old in a few days and will be 70 years old. And they said it went down from 6.4 to 6.1. <laughs> I'm thankful for the blessings of God. I actually climbed a tree last night, actually. Climbed a tree. My wife said, you should be climbing trees. I did climb a tree because I climbed trees when I was younger. Yes, I'm grateful. I've seen people healed. Got pictures of a man that was ill. He came and said the doctors gave him six months to live. He lived for decades. Not a theory. Not a theory. What do you desire? What is it that you desire? Divinely intended. Lived on the fourth dimensional level. Email us, admin at realcoach.com. R-E-L-C-O-A-C-H dot com. Realcoach.com. We've got some training, some courses that can build your faith. Because God is not only uh, spiritual, God is scientific. As a matter of fact, spirit is scientific. Creation is scientific. E equals MC squared. People want magic. There's no magic when it comes to spirit. There's mystery, but not magic. And sometimes when you see the things that spirit does, it looks like magic because you're seeing it when it finally happens. You don't necessarily see the process. It looks like magic. Remember when Jesus says, greater works than these shall you do. Well, today, the miracles of Jesus, like Jairus' daughter, Jesus says she had been asleep. Well, you could say that she had a coma. Well, people are waking up from comas every day. Every day. Greater works. Greater works. The amputations of people who couldn't walk and now they're able to walk. I mean, you got those kinds of things where you have prosthesis, all those kinds of things. Those are the same kind of things that Jesus had connections in some kind of way. You could say the angels did it, whatever it may have been. But it was just advanced science. And people going, traveling out of space, uh, what we call out of space to the moon, planning on doing what they call colonization of Mars, all those kinds of things. There are others that are still living in the Amazon rainforest. 
And I don't mean physically, I mean mentally. So there are many kinds of ways that you can look at this. It's just not by appearance. It's not just talking about words. It's not just talking about physical appearance. It's talking about people just listening to words and thinking that the word that is said is the only thing that's being talked about, but there's something behind the word. There is meaning. And letting the word and the meaning get deeper into you until it actually has meaning to you. What I'm seeking to say right now is that you, as one movie said, are more than even you have known up to this moment. And God is waiting for you to move out of the second creation. No matter what you have been told, if you are still living in the second creation, And if you keep having to be told that you're still living in the second creation, if you're like a Nicodemus and you still are living in the second creation, even after going through whatever the process may be, whatever it may be, you need to move to that first creation, that spiritual creation, and to see the miracles that follow that. That's what we're talking about here now. You'll be happier no matter what happens because you'll begin to understand that you are an infinite being, an eternal being. Eternal being. Eternal being. And because you should be free from the fear of so many things, if not all, in the process, that it gives you free to be who you really are, to do that which you were placed on this earth to do, to live your life, is God and you have made the covenant to live it. I'll stop for now. This is what Spirit has placed on my heart for this moment, for this time. And sometimes it's just it's a challenge, really, in a certain kind of way, beyond everything else, to say in words what can only be said by Spirit to an individual at the deepest level of their own living. You know if this is for you. So what are we seeking to do? I want to enter into covenant with spirit. Find these individuals, whether they are local, global, whatever it may be. These people who want to be millionaires or billionaires, if you will, who want to change the world. Why change the world? Because the more one seeks to do good to others, <laughs> the more good will be done to one. The more alignment one will have for one's own life. It's amazing. It's it's amazing. Not only that, we want to train ministers. I am a composite of ministries from so many different churches, so many different spiritual traditions, to tell you the truth. Global. I've read, I've studied, I've recognized that there is indeed one God. And that God is working everywhere. There's no place where God is not. Remember, he said God is omnipresence. Omnipresent, all presence, everywhere. 
everywhere. At word. In the most difficult circumstance in life, God is there. That's what God told Job. Job was on the list and God said, look. When you're on the, on the look and God says, can you hear me? When you're looking and listening, God says, can you feel me? When you're doing all three of those, God says, can you touch me? Uh, and then there's a moment when God says, do you know that I am the I am, the I am you? It's an amazing journey. So I want to enter into a covenant with creators. Discover those individuals who want to be world changers. At the floor of Flake, his church now is 76,000 individuals. Reverend Dr. Mike Bernard Beckwith reaches a million plus people all around the world. Dr. T.D. Jake's the same. They do it all in their unique way. I believe in the 8 billion people that are in the world that there is a cry in the heart of humanity for yet another ministry. There's a cry for what we're doing. I've seen miracles take place. It was just for African-American men, and I don't think so. That you could just get our formula for lowering your PSA. You're going to stay away from. Like my friend who said he had a stent. He had three of them. I went to the hospital one night after having an episode where I told my doctor my chest hurt. And I rushed to the hospital. I actually didn't rush to the hospital. I went to the hospital. Ended up having all kinds of stuff that was taking place. And then finally, the doctor and nurse, and it seemed like everybody else was rushing in and telling me I had to have a stent done in my chest and everything like that. And I initially, because of so many times I was asked for the same thing, they brought in my children, brought in my wife, all kinds of things. I think my first wife, second wife, both of them came in. Oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I initially said, yes, I'm going to do it. I woke up one night, spirit said, nope. They say, you don't do it. Says says, now you could walk out and you could be dead. Well, I mean, that's true every day. It was five years ago. I walked out. My friend said he had three. Why did I do it? Because I had actually seen a man whom doctors told he would never be able to drive. He would never be able to take like a 10 or 12 hour trip. And all those kind of things, I was his pastor, and I watched him do it. I watched him do it, and I watched him refuse because of the prayers that we had prayed and the prayers that he had prayed and his own desire. I watched him refuse the medical treatment they had recommended. He actually had fallen down in the hospital. They said he had another heart attack in the hospital when he was scheduled to go home that day. If they told him if he had not been there, he would have died. He was not afraid of dying. I was a person that was, I think, went in the house one day for, at four after at four o'clock in the afternoon after he had been sitting in the house all day. I went in the house and found it. So I wasn't the first to do that. 
I was just praying. And that's what I did for myself. And I refused five years ago. Not a one-time job. It's called walking with God. My friend said he had three. And then when it came to the PSA, he was telling about how he did all kinds of stuff that had to do with uh, some kind of x-rays or whatever it may be, seeing it all around everywhere like that. I just kept doing what I was doing as far as my mixture and everything like that. I'll gladly talk to you about that. Admin at real, R-E-L, that's coach, C-O-A-C-H dot com. Ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I can send you the doctor the picture of what the doctor was sent to me. So you can see that I'm not by when I showed it to my wife. Um, she says, well, you got it. That's evidence of what you've done. I didn't write it. I could actually send you the picture of it. I took a picture, sent it to my son. I got a son, big six foot five man <laughs> he's taller than i am bigger than i am <laughs> i remember he was a baby yeah two sons actually they're both bigger than i am my grandsons are bigger than i am one of them looked me in the eye and he like laughingly he like oh no 11 12 years old looked me in the eye and said i'm gonna be taller than you oh my god thank you god What is your desire? To be healthy? Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. That's your desire. To change the world? Is that your desire? To be a life, live a life of significance? That's your desire. There's a step by step process to get there. I encourage you. Give us an email. Let's take the journey together to encourage each other. And we are looking for partners that will partner with us in this journey as we seek to touch the world. All over the world. All over the world. International. We have Spirit of Victory and Praise International Spiritual Center. We have Spirit Victory Praise Transformational Leadership University. We have Real Coach. It's called Restore Creative Life and Leadership Coaching and Consulting. We do executive coaching, um, C suites coaching, and then we also do consultation, uh, organizational and developmental uh, consultation for organizations. We have a lot of things that we do with regard to that. And so we're working in those areas. Our nonprofit is called I Will Restore Ministries Incorporated, or I Will Restore for short. We've done a number of things in regard to that. And there are things that we're placing online now as we build it out. So that we have services that we share with you, uh, things that, you know, you can write down, things like we talk about, what's your desire? We got a planner that we can share with you per your sharing with us, your email, and you can write down the things that we just talked about. What is your desire? What is it that you um, intend for life? And you write all that stuff down, and then we'll work with you step by step so that you go forward and live out your best life. You go forward and live out your best life. And I mean with happiness, with joy, with peace. Uh, with love, all of those things, because you don't want to write down the life you desire and then be miserable. Uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about being happy. Um, um, things that we work with people in regard to relationships. There's no one to change but yourself. Uh, we talk about the aspect of when it comes to taking responsibility for your life. I mean, 100% responsibility for your life. And we say blame no one. That means take 100% responsibility for your life, no matter what you've been through. We, again, step by step, sequence, step by step, so that you can have the fullest, the best, the happiest life, no matter what your past has been. The past is not a, um, um, a precedent for your future. <laughs> it's not a precedent for your future. 
it's all all the saying is it's really up to you. E equals M C squared. Your life is relative to the aspect of what you want to do. If you become aware, just aware of your power, who you are as a child of God, you were, before you were in the womb, you are already a child of God. And there's never been a moment in your existence when you were not a child of God. Let that sink in. Please, I'm going to play us out now. Listen to Northern Lights once more. Listen to this just as you meditate on and then we'll close it out listen to it Admin at realcoats.com. Real R E L dash coach C O A C.